Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, I praise Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and I send peace and blessings to the last prophet Muhammad, his family, his companions, all those who called to his way, all those who established his sunnah to the day of judgment. And I begin with the greeting words of paradise, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. The prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him in his final Arafat sermon highlighted to his followers the need to take the message to all parts of the planet. And so he left the responsibility on the Ummah, on the nation of Islam. No other prophets were to come. No other messengers were to come until the Day of Judgment. And it was the duty of Muslims to take this message all over the planet. Despite the fact that Muslims in some countries were striving and giving the message, in some countries they were not. Islam has succeeded in spreading to the far reaches of the earth. Islam has never stopped, and despite political corruption that entered into the Muslim world, and attacks by crusaders, and propaganda against Islam, it continues to spread. And every day we are finding out of another far off land where the message of Islam has reached. In the chapter known as Surah As-Saf in verse number 8, Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, has told us, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ يُرِيدُونَ لِيُطْفِئُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ They intend to put out the light of Allah with their mouths but Allah will bring His light to perfection even though the disbelievers may despise it. In this case, Nur Allah, the religion of Allah, the Qur'an, the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, Allah has promised to bring it to perfection. And so Islam reached far off lands. And when we compare the histories of the world, when we unlock information, we find some amazing cases of contact between Muslims and people in far off and distant climates. One case is the case of the North, the people of the lands of Scandinavia. These people in the past were known as Vikings. And the Viking people or Viking people were originally people of the fjords. And the fjord is a small inlet which goes in from the sea into the land itself. But the Vikings became known and were synonymous as pirates. And this Viking ship that you see um, was a, a source of fear for many people in the world. The Vikings were able to reach far distances because of their nautical abilities and because of their great courage. If you look at their countries, you will see that the Vikings were divided into three major kingdoms. The Norwegian Vikings um, of Norway went to the UK, Greenland, and Canada. <clears throat> they were well known for Leif Erikson, who was one of the people who uh, landed in America long before Columbus. In Denmark, the Danish Vikings, they traveled to Germany, <clears throat> Spain, and the Mediterranean. The Swedish Vikings from Sweden traveled to Russia, Bukhara, Samarkand, the Black Sea, Turkey, and Iraq. And it is the Swedish Vikings who are the subject of our discussion today. What we find out is that the Swedish Vikings controlled 
uh, from the 8th century, the trade routes uh, from Russia to the Caspian Sea, uh, and they also controlled the Black Sea. These areas were rich in slaves, in furs, and in skins. And the Vikings, uh, because of their fighting abilities and because of their, uh, uh, their ability to go long distances uh, in their ships and, and to withstand the cold and, and the severe climates of this region, were able to dominate the area and to literally control the trades. What is interesting to us is that in the 10th century, an Arab diplomat named Ibn Fadlan uh, came into the region and he actually described in his writings the Viking people. In one uh, description, he said that they were generally tall and blonde and a reddish type of color. He said that the men had beards. There were long beards and there short beards and the women generally put their hair into braids. Ibn Fadlan also gives a description. He said around 920, he said uh, after encountering the Vikings along the Volga River, he said these Vikings were the dirtiest creatures in God's kingdom. And so the Vikings give us strange descriptions. And the Vikings were a people uh, who were, through their courage and, and through their lack of care for their own lives, were able to go to far distances. Here we see um, an, an Arab uh, heater that was used in the 8th century in homes uh, by the Vikings themselves. Now, in terms of the relationship uh, of the Vikings to the Muslims, it appears that during the uh, Abbasid uh, Khilafat, especially in Baghdad, and also in the regions of Samarkand and Tashkent, in what is now southern Russia, that the Vikings were being used as bodyguards, they were used to protect uh, the sea routes, and sometimes they were mercenaries uh, within um, the, the, the troops of armies. And so because of this, and because of their pirate abilities, and they were probably also stealing wealth uh, wherever they possibly could, um, today in uh, Stockholm, Sweden, and when you get the literature from the National Archives, you find that it says that more than 1,000 silver treasures of the Viking Age have been found in Swedish soils. So literally in people's farms, when they are building buildings and going down into the ground, they are excavating huge treasures of silver and gold coins from around the world. But what is astonishing about this is the fact that the majority of these coins are actually um, from Arab lands, Muslim coins. And so it is said that over 70,000 coins found in Scandinavia or in, in Sweden in particular have Arabic on them. And you'll find on the coins, you will literally find um, uh, writing, Arabic writing, you'll find Kalima la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah written on the coins. You will also find um, the names of the different uh, khalifas or the rulers who are in the, in the particular areas. You will find uh, not only silver, um, but you will also find gold. And um, these coins are extremely interesting because uh, in, in, in most cases, um, the coins are are done in such, such a beautiful way that the kalima, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah is clearly written on the coins. And generally, these coins will not have images on them. It has the Arab texts. And surprisingly enough, there are literally coins that have been found dating back to 622 AD. So, coins have been found in Sweden dating back to the time of the Prophet Muhammad So this, is, this means that, that coins coming back from the early Khilafat of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an, and then from Umar's time, from Uthman's time, from Ali's time, may Allah be pleased with them, can be found high in the north amongst the Scandinavians. In the 9th and 10th century, 
um, silver dirhams were coming from Tashkent from, and Samarkand uh, in Russia. And um, this is a coin. I actually was able to purchase a coin on a journey to Scandinavia. And um, it has La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah on one side. And on the other side, it actually has um, the name of the ruler. And we were able to decipher from this coin that it was a Sultan uh, Abu Sarwan. Uh, this is written in the Arabic language. And... Um, it looks, it appears to be dated back uh, to about 1,000 years ago. So this was an amazing find. I, I went into a coin shop and I asked for Arabic and he sold this coin to me for only 50 US dollars. Uh, but this is a treasure that I will treasure for the rest of my life. And um, it is another uh, gem of wisdom which is available today if we would only look and search for our heritage and let other people know about the beauty uh, of Islam in this world. If we continue on in history, we'll find a connection between the Ottoman Empire and the Swedish Vikings. The Ottomans sent diplomats to live in Sweden, and they establish cordial relationship with the people of the north. And so we find that the people within Scandinavia looked upon Muslims as an advanced uh, civilization. It was not a negative relationship because they were far in the north and they were able to uh, develop a, a, a cordial understanding with Muslims. This has led to uh, people accepting Islam in Scandinavia in large numbers. And so today in Sweden, Denmark, Norway, 